this is the answer key for test H. I'm going to kind of go through each of the part two, three, and four questions. Um, so feel free if you got it right to just skip ahead and uh, here we go. So question 25, first one in part two is graph the function y equals x minus three on the set of axes below. Explain how the graph of y, okay, we'll get to that and I guess in a minute. Um, so I've got my calculator over here. I'm going to just plug in the function that they gave me, y equals x minus three. So I'm gonna push the y equals. Remember, I've gotta get absolute value. So I'm gonna hit the math button scroll over to where it says numbers, hit the first one as absolute value sign. Now I can type in X minus three. And now I can hit the second key and get my table up. All right, at this point, my table is showing me the values. I can see where the repetition begins. This is my V shape. This will be my vertex point of the V shape. So I'm going to come over here and it's always a good idea to actually write in what you see on the table. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go over here. I had an X, Y. I always like to write my vertex first, which was three zero in the middle. And then I'll go down three values, up three values. And it actually was going one, two, three, Y, and then one, two, three. I'm gonna come over to my graph and I'm gonna plot the points. Three, zero, four, one, two, one, five, two, one, two, zero, three, six, three. And I'm gonna get my ruler. I have a nice straight edge. Draw my lines. extends further, put air, make sure there's arrows on the ends. Oops, I almost forgot, I forgot to label my graph. I'm counting by one, so I need to put my scale on there. Silly. And then I'm gonna label y equals absolute value of x minus three. At below it says explain how the graph of y equals x minus three has changed from the related graph y equals absolute value. This is the parent function. Remember the parent function starts at zero, zero, and it will go up. Um, this is telling me that from my parent function, it's moved three units to the right. So I write, it moved three units to the right. If you're not sure and you forgot, put that into your calculator. Look at the graph. You'll see that it's probably right here and it moves, it's kept the same shape. It just moved three units to the right. Okay, question 26, Alex is selling tickets to the school play. An adult ticket costs 650 and a student ticket costs $4. Alex uh, sells X adult tickets and 12 student tickets. We need to write a function f of X to represent how much money Alex collected from selling the tickets. This is what you're thinking in your head. So we got to find the total he sold. And I know I'm going to find the total by taking $6.50, multiplying it by the number of adult tickets, and adding it with $4 times the number of student tickets sold. All right, and I know that X amount of adult tickets were sold and 12 student tickets were sold. My final function will start with F of X equals 650X plus, I can just do four times 12 and put in 48. And that will tell me or be a nice function to determine how much money Alex made for selling tickets. Okay, 27, John and Sarah are each saving money for a car. The total amount of money John will save is given by the function 60 plus 5X. 
The total amount of money Sarah will save is given by the function g of x equals x squared plus 46. After how many weeks x will they have the same amount of money? So we want to figure out when f of x is the same or equal to g of x. Well, I'm just going to take my two expressions here out of there and set them equal to each other. x squared plus 46 equals 60 plus 5x. Now I've got to find my x value, my 0. So I'm going to bring my 60 over and I'm going to bring my 5x over here. So minus 60 minus 5x. And I like to put things in descending order, so I'm going to have x squared minus 5x minus 14, 0. I think I can factor that because I know 2 times 7 is 14 and the difference of those is 5. So I'm going to have x, x, negative 7, positive 2, negative 7x, plus 2x is negative 5x. So that works. Equals 0. Set each of these equal to 0. Each of the factors. So x will equal negative 2. x will equal 7. We can't have negative amount of weeks, so we reject that one. So the answer is, after 7 weeks, they will have the same amount of money saved. Now, here's the kicker though. It says explain how you arrived at your answer. So just doing the work is not really going to be explaining it for you. You need to put that in words. So my explanation should be something about what I did. I set both functions equal to each other, solve for x. I set both functions equal to each other and solved for x. And you can you can actually go into saying why well I rejected -2 because you can't have negative two weeks. It doesn't make sense. All right. Question 28. Oh, I love these. If the difference of 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 minus x squared plus 3x minus 2 is multiplied by half x squared, what is the result in standard form? Hmm. Well, first I'm going to have to subtract these. And remember, when you have a subtraction sign, you're actually adding the opposite or you're distributing the negative sign to the second polynomial. So I technically have 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, and it's going to be minus x squared minus 3x plus 2. I see it change the signs. So their difference is 2x squared minus 5x plus 7. Now I've got to multiply that by half x squared. So half x squared times 2x squared minus 5x plus 7. And I will get half of 2 is 1 x to the fourth. Don't forget you're adding your exponents. Half of negative 5 is negative 2.5 x cubed. And half of 7 is positive 3.5 x squared. You could have this in fraction form. You could have x to the fourth minus 
5 halves x cubed plus 7 halves x squared. That would be acceptable as well. Question 29. Dylan invested $600 in a savings account at 1.6% annual interest rate. He made no deposits or withdrawals on the account for two years. The interest was compounded annually, fined to the nearest cent, the balance in the account after two years. So I've got my formula, Y equals A, the amount at the start, times 1 plus the rate to the X power, whereas my rate is 1.6%, so your rate is actually 0.6%. 0.016, and my A is the amount I had at the start. X is my number, my time, two years, so that's my X. I'm going to set it in, 600 times 1 plus 0.16. Remember, it's like you're paying 100, you're getting 100% of what you had plus 16, or I'm sorry, plus 1.6% more. And we're going to raise that to the second power. And you can use your calculator here just so I can easily plug it into my calculator. That's kind of what it would look like. And I get y equals 619.35. Three six to the nearest cent. Well, cents go out to the hundreds place. So my final answer is six hundred nineteen dollars and thirty five cents. Okay, question thirty. Determine the smallest integer that makes negative three x plus seven minus five x less than fifteen true. And so I'm actually going to combine my like terms here. I got a negative 3x. I've got a negative 5x. So that's negative 8x plus 7, less than 15. I'm going to subtract. Divide by a negative. In your head, you should be going ding, 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 ding. When I divide or multiply by a negative, my sign will flip. The sign will flip. There's a note for you, flip. So x is greater than negative 1. You can kind of visualize that. So if you had a number line real quick, and I had some numbers on it. Here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. x are all the numbers that are greater than negative 1. But notice it's an open circle. So can x be negative 1? No. So the smallest integer is 0. The smallest integer is 0. That makes the inequality true. It's always nice to write a nice sentence. Okay. All right, 31. This was just basically you have to explain. You have to explain gr both graphs. So the residual plots form uh, from two different sets of bivariate data are graphed below. There's graph A, graph B. Remember, this would be considered the, where the line of best fit is, and these are how far away your points are your, from your scatter plot from the line of best fit. These are actually right on the line of best fit, and these are distances away. Same one here. So explain using evidence from graph A and graph B, which graph indicates that the model for the data is a good fit. So looking at graph A, there is no pattern. This would be the best model because the residuals are randomly scattered. So graph A is the best model because the residuals are randomly
scattered. Okay, graph B, and you got to explain both graphs. You just can't say which one. Um, you can't say graph A because I have to say graph A because of this, but graph B is no because there is a pattern. Because the residuals form a pattern. So the model is not a good fit. Okay. All right. Question 32. A landscaper is creating a rectangular flower bed such that the width is half the length. The area of the flower bed is 34 square feet. Well, it's a rectangle, so I'm going to draw a little picture. There's my garden. It's very exciting. It's a rectangle. The area... A equals 34, and it says mm, the width is half of the length, um, the area of the flower bed. Write and solve an equation to determine. I'm going to use X. So the width is half of the length. So the length will be X, and the width will be half of the length, half of X. And now I'm going to make an equation showing that a half x times x equals 34 because area is length times width. <coughs> this is a half x squared equals 34. I've got to solve for x, so I've got to get everybody on one side. So 1 half x squared minus 34 equals 0. Uh, it's not the difference of two perfect squares, so I guess I'm going to have to go quadratic formula on this one. Can't use uh, completing the square because I have a, um, a non-1a value. So I'm going to use my formula. I've got a is 0.5 or a half. B is 0. There is no something x. And C is negative 34. So I could do that. So let's see. We've got negative 0, plus or minus. There's no, there's no B. So let's see. we got negative 0, which can't have a negative 0, so it's just 0, plus or minus. It'll be 0 squared minus 4 times 0. 0.5 times negative 34 all over two times 0.5. Well, that won't be too bad. Half of two is one. So I have zero plus or minus um, zero plus, because negative times negative is a positive. Half of four is two. Two times 34 is 68 all over one. So it really ends up just being plus or minus radical 68, and when I actually plug that into my calculator, positive radical 68 is 8.246, 8.246, blah, 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 blah. It's not a perfect square, so it keeps going, or it would be negative 8.246, blah, 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 blah. So since we're talking about measurements, we can't have a negative value. So let's get rid of that. Let's reject it. So the length is about 8.2 feet. So my length is 8.2 feet, which is my x. And the width is half of 8.2 which is 4.1 feet, which is what they're asking us about in the first place. Because the question is, determine the width to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I use quadratic formula. You could, though, also, 
you could find, you could just square both sides. So you could get um, 0.5 x squared and 34 over here, and you could just find the square root. You could do that, but before you did that, you'd have to find the, I'm um, sorry, I went too fast. I'd have to get x by itself, divide 34 in half, which is x squared equals um, 34 divided by 0.5 is actually like doubling it. So 68, find the square root of both sides, and you'll get x equals plus or minus whatever radical 68 is, which we just did down there. Okay, I kind of like using quadratic formula, but that's an easier way too. Okay, we're almost done. We got 33. Question 33, Albert says that the two systems of equations shown below have the same solutions. Determine and state whether you agree with Albert. Justify your answers. So I've got to determine and state whether I agree with Albert and justify. Um... Second system. So there, there are a couple ways you can go about doing this. You can um, find the solutions for both systems and then compare them. Or something easier would be like maybe take your first system, find the solution. So I have 8x plus 9y equals 48 and 12x plus 5y equals 21. Everybody's lined up, so I'm going to use elimination. And I think I'll eliminate the y's. I'm going to multiply by negative 5, positive 9. All right. So I end up with negative 40x minus 45y. And I'll end up with 108x plus 45y equals 189. Now I can eliminate the y's. They're out of there. I have 68x equals negative 51. Divide by 68. Divide by 68. So x equals negative 0.75. Then I'll just sub substitute into one of the equations. I think I'll use the first one because it's smaller numbers. So 8 times negative 0.75 plus 9y equals 48. This is negative 6 plus 9y equals 48. Add 6. Fifty-four. Divide by 9, divide by 9, so y equals 6. So I know the solution to the first system is negative 3 quarters, 6. That's the sol solution for the first system. So you have, you have a couple options here. You could solve the second system and see if you get the same answers. Another good way to do this would be just to plug in your x and y here and do a check to see if it works. Um, so here's my second system. I'll make a little note here. And all I'm going to do is take these answers and do like a little check. So 8 times negative 0.75 plus 9 times 6 equals 48. And I'm also going to check negative 8.5 times 6 equals negative 51. All right, and when I do that, I get a negative 6 plus 54. Does that equal 48? It sure does. That checks. And this is negative mm, 51. That worked out well. So they both check. So you need to write a sentence. I agree with Albert. And the two systems have the same solutions. Okay. 
All right. Question 34. We're almost done. Okay. Question 34 then. The equation um, to determine the weekly earnings of a salary at the hamburger shack is given by W of X, where X is the number of hours worked. Now, there are some restrictions on the domain here. Look at if you're working greater than 40 hours, you use this equation. If you're working between zero and 40 hours, that means if you work exactly 40 hours, you need to use this equation. It says determine the difference in salary in dollars for an employee who works 52 hours versus one who works 38 hours. So I'm going to kind of divide my paper up here. So we got the 52 hour employee and the 38 hour employee. 52 is greater than 40, so I need to use this formula. I got to use the 15 times 50 minus 40, or sorry, 52. I don't know why I'm doing 15. Let me restart that. 52 equals 15 times 52 minus 40 plus 400. And I'm just going to keep solving that and see how much this employee will make. Um, 52 minus 40 is 12. Fifteen times twelve is one eighty. So an employee who works fifty-two hours would get. Um, I'm sorry, that's not one eighty. It's eighteen hundred. Would get fifty-eight. No, I was right before. That was a zero. Sorry, the answer key that I'm looking at has a different number on it. We'll get $580. 38 hours is in between 40 and zero. So that's a pretty easy one. It's just W of 38. And I'm going to use the 10 times 38. And so that employee would make... $380 it says determine the difference. So 580 minus 380 equals $200 difference. Part two of the question says determine the number of hours an employee must work in order to earn $445. Explain how you arrived at this answer. All right. So I've got to figure out, first of all, the most someone could make um, using the first thing, they'd have to go for 400 hours, right? Because, I mean, not 400 hours, 40 hours. So if you think about it, um, if you plugged in the most you can make using the first formula, it would be this. So you'd only have 10 times 40, and that would only make $400. I want to earn 445. So I'm going to need to use this equation because obviously it's got to be more than 40 hours. 40 hours will only get you $400. So I'm going to set up my total. 445 that I want. I want it to equal 15 times X minus 40 plus 400. And I'm just going to solve um, for X to find the number of hours. So 445 equals 15 X minus 600 plus 400. Keep going. Combine like terms, add 200, add 200, 645 equals 15x, divide by 15, divide by 15, so x is 43 hours. 
and it wants us to explain how we arrived at our answer. Well, since X was greater, since X had to be, X had to be greater than 40, I plugged in 445. for W of X and solved for X. So I guess I should put the equation I used here too. Okay. Question 35, an online electronics store must sell at least $2,500 worth of printers and computers per day. Each printer costs um, $50 and each computer costs $500. The store can ship a maximum of 15 items per day. So I'll need some let statements here. I'm going to let X equal the number of printers. And I'm going to let y equal the number of um, computers because they want me to graph a system of inequalities that models these constraints. So my first inequality, well, I know that I've got x plus y, the computers plus the printers cannot be over 15. So they have to be less than or equal to 15 amount sold because they'll only sell 15 items per day. And I also know that they want at least $2,500 worth of those sold. So 50 times the printers, the printers are $50 each, plus 500 times the computers. I want it to be at least, so it's greater than or equal to, $2,500. Now in order to graph that, I've got to get my equation so that y equals, um, so let's see, let's subtract 50x, I'll get 500y is greater than or equal to negative 50x. plus 2,500, divide by 500. Keep this in fraction form because we're going to need it to graph. So y is greater than or equal to negative 1 over 10. x is going down 1 over 10, um, plus 5. Hmm. This one's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be y is less than or equal to negative 1 over 1x. One plus 15. So you've got your M, you've got your B, you've got your M, you've got your B. All right, so my biggest, I have to have my biggest y-intercept at 15. Um, I think I'm just going to number this by ones, I think it'll work. So I've got my printers along the bottom, X, my computers along the top, Y. Zero, one, two, three, four, let's put five here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And same thing going up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, my first inequality will be a solid line. And it will begin at 5, goes down 1 over 10. Down 1 over 10. Make my line. Okay. 
actually, I shouldn't extend the line that far. I should stop it because... have a restriction okay and it says that y's are greater than so this one's going to be shaded upward and that's for um, y not y equals 50x 50x plus 500y is greater than or equal to 2500. The next one I need to graph starts at 15, and it's going down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, so on and so forth. It's less than so my solution sets here where they overlap and I'm gonna label this side X plus Y less than or equal to 15 okay determine a combination of printers and computers that would allow the electronic store to meet all the constraints explain how you obtained your answer so basically, you can pick any combination here, five printers to eight um, Yeah, you can pick anything. You can pick five and eight, five and nine, five and eight, five and seven. You could pick two printers with this many. Um, so there's a ton of combinations you can have. You just have to make sure at the bottom that you state, I picked, for example, if I did five printers and seven computers, I would state that I did this because five, seven is in the solution set. So it could be any combination, as long as it's within the solution set double shaded area. Question 36, I'm gonna need my calculator for this one, hence the screen. An application developer released a new app to be downloaded. The table below gives the number of downloads for the first four weeks. Write an exponential equation. This is key here, they're telling you what kind of equation it is, so you can use your calculator under your stat key. So I'm going to go over my calculator. I'm going to type in all my um, data. I'm going to go to stat edit, put in my list one, one, two, three, four, put in my list two, 120, 180, 270, and 405. And I'm going to go back to stat, select calculate, and go down to where it says exponential regression because it wants an exponential. Make sure I have list one and list two. And right there, you've got all your information. It tells you what it should look like. Y equals AB to the X. A times B to the X. And then I'm just gonna plug in the variables. They gave me an A of 80 times 1.5 to the X. All right, so then you're going to go over and finish the rest. Use this model to predict how many downloads the developer would expect in the 26th week if this trend continues. My X is the 26th, so I'm just going to plug it in. Y equals 80 times 1.5 to the 26th power. I get Y equals... 3030140.195 to the nearest download. So it's going to be 3,030,140 downloads. Would it be reasonable to use this model to predict the number of downloads past one year? Well, 
past one year. A year is 52 weeks. So you'd have to plug this in, check the numberage, see what you get for 52 weeks. And you get a really big number. I mean, you get 1.1477187 times 10 to the 11th power. That's 114 billion. 771 million 870 thousand that's a lot of downloads that's not really reasonable it's too big it's not reasonable versus the population so we would say no the number of downloads is too big not reasonable versus the population. Okay, our last question is a doozy. We got a football player attempts to kick a football over a goalpost. The path of the football can be modeled by this function where X is the horizontal distance from the kick and H of X is the height of the football above the ground when both are measured in feet. Now they want us to, on the set of axes below, graph the function Y equals H of X over the interval. Look, so I've got to go from zero to 150. That's going to be a big deal when I'm trying to do my um, numbering along here, my scale. So we'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, though, you're going to type this into your calculator, your Y equals value. So here I go. I'm typing it in using my little alpha Y equals to get a fraction. All right, now check this table out. I was at 15. There's a whole number. 15, it was 9 feet. Oh, that's my husband vacuuming, sorry. And 0 is 0 feet. So I really don't want to do these fractions. I'm going to look for all the ones that have whole number Y values. And if you keep going, you will see there are quite a few, but you got to keep going. Like there's 30 is 16. And it looks like it's going by 15. So we went from 0 to 15 to 30. That might be a good numbering suggestion. Okay. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in what I saw. So at 0, 0, um, then there was 15, 9. Then I went up another 15 and got 30, 16. Another 15, 45, 21. And this is all in your um, table of, on your calculator. So you're going to have to do a lot of scrolling on this one. 60 was 24. Um, 75 was 25. And then I start seeing some repeats happening. 90 was 24. Um, 105 was 21. 120, 16, 135 was nine. And then at 150, we hit the ground again. Okay. So I need to write, this is going to be my height. Sorry, I can't write sideways very well. Height and feet. And this is going to be the distance. from kick. That's also in feet. Okay, my zero, zero. I'm going to take a, I'm going to count by 15s, but I'm going to skip a space because that will work out well. So 15, 30, 45, 45. It's very exciting. 120. At this point in the test, if this was the real regions test, you'd be like, oh, I'm on my last question. How nice. All right. And then I'm going to count. I think I'm just going to count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 
two, four, six, eight, twenty, two, four, six, eight, thirty. Because my highest number is twenty-five. So this is my height and feet. This is my distance from the kick. Um this is you know, kicking a football. If you want a title. Could be kick versus height. So I'm now going to start. It's going to be 0, 9, 30 was 16, 2, 4, 6, 45 was 21, 60 was 24, 2, 4. My absolute highest height, uh. 75 was, oops, I moved my dot over too far. Let me just change that dot. There we go. Perfect. 75 was the highest height, which was 25. And then it starts to repeat what I had before until it hits the ground. And then I'm going to carefully connect the dots as best I can. It's a parabola because it's a quadratic. Little label h of x equals negative 1 over 225 x squared quadratic. All right. Determine the vertex of h of x. Interpret the meaning of this vertex. Well, the vertex is 75, 25. And the meaning of it at 75 feet, the ball will be 25 feet, 25 feet high. The goalpost is 10 feet high and 45 yards away from the kick. Hmm. Will the ball be high enough to pass over the goalpost? All right. So the kicker's at zero. They're asking us the, let's see, the goalpost is 10 feet high and 45 yards away from the kick. So 45 yards away from the kick, the ball is at what height? Let's see, it's at a height of 21 feet. Hmm. So 45 feet is not the same as yards though. So if I have 45 yards, there's three feet in a yard. So 45 times three means that I have to go 135 feet. So now I'm going to look at my feet at uh, 135, and it's at 9 feet. So at 135 feet from the kick... The height of the football is only nine feet high. So the height of the football is only nine feet high. Therefore, that ball's not going over a 10 foot goalpost. The ball will not go over the post. Hmm. 